Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Arrow Day at the Capitol 2022. Uh, thank you all for coming. This is an absolutely amazing crowd uh, in an amazing building. My name is Grace Nardis. I'm the director for the Oklahoma Aeronautics Commission. We are proud to host this day of advocacy, appreciation, education, and awareness of our state's second largest industry, aviation aerospace. At the end of the day, we have a great lineup of speakers that's coming to talk to you. Uh, I know a lot of you have been here advocating and making our state's leaders aware of aviation aerospace. This is a great field to be a part of. I love all these blue shirts. We see all these students here amongst us, young minds willing to maybe join the career field that is aviation aerospace and defense. For all the parents that are listening out there, and for the kids too, Probably the most important statistic that we'll tell you today is that the average annual salary of a worker in the aviation, aerospace, and defense industry is over $73,000 a year. These are good paying jobs. These are jobs that are going to allow people to become educated, join the workforce, stay right here in Oklahoma, and have a great life. And at the end of the day, one of the most exciting things that I would be willing to share with you is that this requires all kinds of education whether you come straight out of high school and you go to work for American Airlines as an A&P mechanic, or whether you go on to one of our institutions of higher education to get an engineering degree, a master's degree, or even a doctoral degree, there are jobs for you in aviation and aerospace. At the end of the day, what we are here to do is make our state's leader aware of this second largest industry with over $44 billion a year of annual economic activity, we are here to appreciate those business members, those service members that are in our military, those individuals that have been tirelessly working to support aviation aerospace over the last several years. We want to appreciate them and give them a round of applause. And we're here to educate. We're here to educate our students, our community leaders, and our parents of what this industry can mean to the great state of Oklahoma. I do have a few thank yous that I want to provide. Thank you to the folks at the Capitol that made this event possible. Thank you for allowing us to be in this beautiful building that was recently renovated. Uh, thank you to the Speaker of the House and the Pro Tem of the Senate for allowing us to have this great event on the fourth floor rotunda of our state Capitol. Uh, I also want to give a great shout out, and if you give me a, a helping round of applause, to the lady that makes this show happen. For those of you that may not know, I'm just the figurehead of the agency, but the lady that really makes this happen is Sandra Shelton. Where are you, Sandra? Give him a wave. So Sandra Shelton came to us. She's my government affairs and communications manager. She came to us six years ago with lots of vision and lots of energy and lots of thrust. And we vectored that thrust into some of the great events that we're able to have today. Thank you all for being here, and I'd like to introduce our next speaker, who's a really, really big fan of aviation, aerospace, and defense, who happens to head up the chamber that is, that, this chamber, all right, I got my lefts and my rights confused. Uh, the chamber to my left, to your right, the Oklahoma House Representatives Speaker, Charles McCall. Well, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for being here at the State Capitol. We are very excited that we are nearing the end of the, the renovation. The remodel has turned out beautiful. This is the people's house, it's the people's capital, the state of Oklahoma. Before I get started with formal remarks, ladies and gentlemen, let's give a round of applause to our servicemen and women here in the military, protecting our freedoms here in the state of Oklahoma and across the globe. We appreciate you very, very, very much. It is an honor to be here today to say, to make an introduction and welcome you to the Capitol. As a citizen of the state of Oklahoma, as the Speaker of the House, as a business person in the private sector, aviation has been an aerospace, the herit a heritage of Oklahoma. We utilize aviation uh, in our business. And business aviation plays such an important role in our business, and it's such a 
not only the past, the present, but the future of the state of Oklahoma. The aerospace industry itself is the second largest industry in the state of Oklahoma. And that there are very there's several segments that represent aerospace that are all very important and a priority to the members of the legislature. Not just the general aviation that I've spoken about, our military installations are among the best in the country and the world. The work that is being done there both in the by our military and our civilian based people here have really bolstered uh, the state of Oklahoma, raised its station, and truly is the greatest opportunity for our state to move forward. I appreciate each and every one of you. I want you to know that the members of the House of Representatives, as well as you will hear from the Senate as well, we prioritize our opportunities in the state of Oklahoma for aerospace. Not only is it our second largest industry, but it has the most upside potential of any industry that we have, whether it be private sector, research and development, testing, taking, taking all of our higher education and focusing it on turning out more engineers and workforce readiness of our citizenry to grow this even further. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for being here today and showing this great support for the, one of the top industries for the state of Oklahoma. And I look forward to finishing this session prioritizing aerospace, not only what's been accomplished in the last few years, but where we can go in the state of Oklahoma. Thank you so much. Have a great day here at the state capitol, and I look forward to advancing the state of Oklahoma with you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Speaker McCall. Uh, next up, we have a gentleman who has come into the Capitol who has really energized the aviation and aerospace industry, has been an author of many bills to support aviation, aerospace, and defense, and who I consider a, a mentor and a leader of aviation in the, in the, in the Senate chamber, Senator Paul Racino. Um, First off, let me say what a great, great aviation day at the Oklahoma State Capitol. Give yourselves a hand. Thank you so much for everything you do. Uh, today I get to speak on behalf of uh, our Senate leader, President Pro Tem, Greg Treat. Uh, unfortunately, he couldn't be here this morning, so he asked me to say a few words. And one of the first things I want to convey to you is we appreciate everything you do for the state of Oklahoma, um, employing people bringing diverse activity to our state, finding new and upcoming innovative technologies, handling our military members with grace and dignity. This is something that means so much to the people in this building. Um, when I first got here in 2017, one of the first things I said is we need aerospace and aviation to be the number one economic driver in the state of Oklahoma. We don't need to rely on oil and gas. Um, we. We love our oil and gas. We love uh, the people in oil and gas. Unfortunately, we see that it's so cyclical and moves up and down. But aerospace and aviation continues to take off. We are now in space. We are doing UAVs. This technology is applying to electric vehicles. Everything we do in aerospace and aviation can apply to so many di different sectors. So thank you all so much for everything you do. There is something that uh, I want to share with you. When you go visit your legislators today, many of them do not understand that of the 77 counties, 77 counties touch aerospace and aviation in some way, shape, or form. And many of them have no idea of the economic impact. So there's a word that starts with a B, and that is billions. And we are now at $45 billion in economic impact, $45 billion. So when you see your legislators, you just remind them, $45 billion. That matters. It matters a lot. So please have fun today. Please enjoy being here. This is a great day for the state of Oklahoma. It's a great day for us. And this is really a fun time. So thank you all. Appreciate you. And enjoy your day.
Thank you, Senator Racino, for those great words. Um, how could we have an Aero Day at the Capitol without introducing the 800-pound gorilla in the room, the state's largest single-site employer in Tinker Air Force Base, and the military MRO capital of the world? Here with us today is Colonel Hall Sebring, the 72nd Wing Air Base Commander, the uh, unofficial or official, however we want to say it, mayor of the base. Colonel Sebring, please join me at the podium. Good morning, everybody. This capital is beautiful. The first time I've, I've been in here. Thanks for the invitation. Thanks for the opportunity to talk about what we do at Tinker Air Force Base. It's a pleasure to speak with you all today, and we are all here because we all have a passion for aviation. You'll be hard-pressed to find a location outside of Oklahoma that is more passionate about aviation. Like he said, I'm Hall Sieber, and I have the privilege to serve as both the 72nd Air Base Wing Commander and the Installation Commander for Tinker Air Force Base. And for those of you who are not familiar with that term, Grayson just uh, stole my thunder there. I'm the unelected mayor, as Mayor Dukes likes to call me, of Tinker. We have a tremendous amount of growth over the years, and what started out 80 years ago, 80 years ago, is now a massive conglomerate of organizations comprised of civil service airmen, active duty airmen, soldiers, sailors, marines, guardians. We also have our reservists and our national guardsmen. And we are roughly 30,000 people working to generate combat air power for America. And while Tinker celebrates its 80th year this year, the Air Force will celebrate its 75th. Tinker and the Air Force have seen a lot of change over those years. Today, Tinker is home to six wings, the Air Logistics Complex, Supply Chain Management Wing, Air Control Wing, Air Refueling Wing, Navy Stratcom Wing 1, and my wing, the 72nd Air Base Wing, plus another 45 or so mission partners. It is also home to the Sustainment Center led by Lieutenant General Tom Miller. That's my boss. <laughs> if you're thinking about aviation or combat power and you are not informed on what happens at Tinker Air Force Base, you have an incorrect sight picture. Nearly all of the Air Force's engines, from the TF-33 that powers the mighty B-52 and the E-3 to the newest F-135 engine that powers our amazing F-35, to future engines that are just now in development, that work is done right here at Tinker. Tinker is aviation past, present, and future. I also wonder if you know how much software engineering happens right here in Oklahoma at Tinker Air Force Base. Software helps aircraft fly more efficiently, drop weapons more accurately, and that happens right here. It's a growth industry. The Air Logistics Complex, led by Major General Jeff King, off to my right here, has openings for all kinds of engineers, and our appetite for new recruits exceeds the production of engineers put out within the state. If Oklahoma is producing engineers who want business in aviation, we're hiring. Oklahoma is also home to two unique aircraft, the E-3 Sentry and the E-6B Mercury. Today, the 552nd Air Control Wing, which flies the E-3 and led by Kevin Coyle, provides combatant commanders an unbelievable air and ground picture, helping to provide deterrence. But if deterrence fails, will allow those commanders to prosecute targets at a time and place of our choosing. When you think about the fight in the air, the women and men of the 552 are the quarterbacks calling the plays and have vision of the entire battlefield. They're also leading us into the future with a new A-frame that will replace the 27 E3 stationed here today. We are the future of aviation. We airmen are proud of what we've done these last 75 years, but I'd be remiss not to talk about our Navy, which was founded in 1775. Our red dirt sailors, as they call themselves, are 1,500 strong and affectionately called Tinker Air Force Base, Naval Air Station Tinker. Strategic Communications Wing 1 continually flies, or currently flies, the E-6B Mercury under the command of Commodore C.J. Jessup, also off to my right here. They are responsible for communications to and from our nuclear assets, whether they are under the water, in the air, or in a missile silo. The center of nuclear deterrence for our United States is right here in Oklahoma at Tinker. And like the Air Force, they are also looking for a new airframe. Fighters, bombers, nuclear command and control are amazing platforms that can only fly so far. It takes another mission set firmly established here in Oklahoma, aerial refueling, to truly make those other airframes combat capable. 
The Renroll KC-135 and the newest tanker, the KC-46A Pegasus, are all overhilled right here at the Air Logistics Complex just up the road. Operationally, though, the 507th Air Refueling Wing stationed here at Tinker, led by Colonel Michael Parks, is a group of citizen airmen. And those reservists work in the airlines, the hospitals, banks, grocery stores, you name it, outside the gates of Tinker on a day-to-day -day basis. But a few times a month, they put on their uniform and they do what they, they do, what no one else can do in the world, aerial refueling. And this allows our direct attack assets to do what they do best, win. There's one thing I haven't talked about yet, and that's no plane flies for long without pieces and parts to sustain it. Depot work does not happen without innovation in the supply chain, finding ways to procure parts our Air Force needs to continue as the reigning world champs. Mr. Steve Gray leads our supply chain management wing. It is the Department of the Air Force's only wholesale supply chain function. And so again, Oklahoma finds itself in the center of the world, leading change and innovation across the supply chain. And finally, your very own, Oklahoma's pride and joy, the 72nd Air Base Wing, ties all that together. We are civil engineering, communications, airfield operations, logistics, security, medical, and so much more. And like our partners, we are accelerating change along with our 45 mission partners so they can be more effective and more efficient at their mission. So when the Air Force or the Navy are called upon, we will not lose. To close, I'd say the state of the base is good. Our future is bright with land acquired through your help. We are building out the Air Force's KC-46 complex. We are expanding our software engineering group. And thanks to the generosity of Oklahomans, the vision of the legislature, and Oklahoma Aeronautics Commission, we are able to also expand to the east as we bring on the Air Force's newest bomber, the B-21 Raider. We grow in partnership with our local communities, Midwest City, Dell City. We grow in partnership with Oklahoma industry leaders like Lockheed Martin, Boeing, GE, Rolls-Royce, Pratt & Whitney, Honeywell, and I could go on. And finally, we are partnered with some of our nation's leading educational institutions, the University of Oklahoma, where my son attends, Boomer Sooner, Oklahoma State University, University of Central Oklahoma, and Rose State College, just outside our gate. We have to work. We have some work to do for our future, and we'll do that together with our off-base partner. Today, Tinker is an economic engine of $6 billion, almost $2 billion of that in direct payroll. Tomorrow, Tinker will be bigger. It will be more effective. It will be more efficient, securing our nation's combat power in the future. Tinker was the past, is the present, and will be the future of combat air power and civilian aviation. Thank you. Thank you, Colonel. I appreciate those great words about Tinker Air Force Base. We, uh, we are now going to pivot. We have the largest military MRO facility that you just heard about. We're now going to pivot to the largest civilian MRO facility in the world. That's the thing we do best in Oklahoma. We keep airplanes flying. We do maintenance, repair, and overhaul on the entire fleet of aircraft that are flown across our great nation. It gives me great pleasure to introduce David Seymour, Chief Operating Officer for American Airlines. Well, good, good morning, everybody. Great to be here. Uh, great to be a part of this event here. Uh, it's an uh, absolute pleasure uh, what, what the state of Oklahoma does. So I want to thank everybody for this opportunity. I'm David Seymour, as you said. I'm the Chief Operating Officer of American Airlines, and I'm honored to be here today. Events like this have always been important to me, but after the last two years, it's really great to have in-person events again. And we're starting to see more and more of those as we come out of the pandemic. It is another sign that we are starting to get the, air, the country moving again, which is really good for an airline. I want to thank Governor Stitt, Senator Lankford, Senator Inhofe, Pro Tem Treat, Speaker McCall, Mayor Bynum, and the entire state of Oklahoma for your unwavering support of American Airlines and the entire airline industry. It's always been there, but especially as we face some of the toughest times over the last couple years. As the COVID-19 pandemic took hold, we saw unprecedented and prolonged drop in air travel. And with no re real return of demand in sight, 
American and the rest of the aviation and aerospace industry face some very unimaginable decisions. We're incredible, great, incredibly grateful for the payroll support program and all the extensions that came with that that allowed us to continue flying. It continued to pain our team members that were critical to this, and it proved every day the, that they were the very definition of essential workers and remains ready to support the country as it grew back economically. Oklahoma has played a large and integral part in American, American Airlines history and more importantly, continues to play a big part for our future. In 1946, American Airlines moved its maintenance operations from LaGuardia Airport in New York down to Tulsa, Oklahoma. And since then, our, Tulsa, our tech ops organization in Tulsa Maintenance Space has grown to be the largest commercial aviation maintenance facility in the world, including 3.3 million square feet of hangar space and shop space sitting on 330 acres at the Tulsa International Airport. On average, more than 900 American Airlines aircraft visit the base annually, accounting for nearly ha over half of the maintenance work that we do on American Airlines aircraft. And the work that's done there, which is aircraft overhauls, aircraft modifications, engine overhauls, component repair, engineering, supply and logistics for the entire airline, facility maintenance, and IT support to keep the maintenance organization moving is accomplished by the more than 4,700 team members that call Tulsa their home base. It makes American one of the largest employers in the city of Tulsa. In early 2020, American announced an investment of $550 million in the base, underscoring our long-term commitment to Tulsa and to the base, and looking forward to modernizing the facility that we have. And as of today, we've invested almost $372 million of that in critical infrastructure projects and upgrades to the facility, ensuring that Tulsa base is ready to allow us to continue to thrive in the future and has the resources to make sure maintaining our aircraft is the safest and the most reliable fleet will continue for the years to come. And we recently extended our lease to the city of Tulsa, so we're there through 2048, uh, further reinforcing our commitment not only to the state of Oklahoma, to Tulsa, but also to our team members that are there. But our commitment to the state of Oklahoma reaches well beyond Tulsa. In March, American and our regional partners will operate up to 42 departures a day out of the state of Oklahoma, including flights out of here in Oklahoma City at Will Rogers World Airport, Tulsa International Airport, Stillwater Regional Airport, and the Lawton Fort Sill Regional Airport. That's a 50% increase over what we flew last year and includes more and new opportunities for those in Oklahoma to connect to the rest of the world through our key hubs and markets, including Austin, Texas, LaGuardia in New York, Washington, D.C., and Miami. American continues investing in Tulsa, and this summer we will operate 19 routes of the Sooner State. That's up from 13 that we operated in 2019 pre-pandemic. So we're continuing to grow here. Although the state of Oklahoma, uh, th throughout the state of Oklahoma, including the Tulsa Maintenance Base, we have nearly 5,000 team members here. And we're la laser focused on developing the next generation of aviation professionals in Oklahoma and beyond. American continues to support hands-on learning and uh, building a trained workforce pipeline and has previously donated McDonnell Douglas MD-80 aircraft to Oklahoma State University, Tulsa Tech uh, Center, Tulsa Air and Space Museum, and Career Tech. In fact, American has donated more MD-80s, which was the former workhorse of the American Airlines fleet, to, um, uh, to Oklahoma institutions than anywhere else in the country. One of the final two that retired was donated to Career Tech in Oklahoma City. We know that developing the next generation starts with investment, and those donated aircraft allow aspiring aviation maintenance technician, uh, technicians to cut their teeth on the real thing, training on an actual commercial aircraft. On the engineering front, we have fantastic co-op uh, programs 
uh, with key recruiting uh, done at Oklahoma State, and we're always, like the military, always looking for plenty of engineers. Through America's wholly owned regional uh, carrier, Envoy, we're giving prospective aviators early access to em uh, employment options to pursue their dream of going into uh, the flight deck. And we actually allow that through programs that we have at Oklahoma State University, Southeastern Oklahoma State, and the University of Oklahoma. We know that the path to the flight deck isn't always uh, the most attainable and the coming, uh, for coming to aviators, and we're working with our partners to do our part to remove all the barriers that stand in the way. And with the wave of pilot retirements that are coming up over the next several years, we know this is extremely critical for us to get in front of. Just as we focus on developing and growing the next generation of avia uh, aviation professionals, so too are we focused on ensuring our airline can thrive forever. Key to, key to that is being efficient and accountable, specifically to sustainability. We've made huge strides in the last two years, and America, America has set a goal to reach net zero emissions by 2050. And we've taken meaningful action to help to get there, including our fleet renewal program, working on sustainable aviation fuel, and operational improvements. American has undertaken the most extensive fleet renewal program in the history of commercial aviation, and currently has the youngest mainline fleet of all the U.S. network carriers. And since 2013, we've invested more than $24 billion in modernizing our fleet by taking delivery of almost 600 new aircraft. We retired several, of our, uh, several other aircraft over that same period, and that process was accelerated in 2020 as we got into the pandemic uh, and saw uh, decreased demand. As the post-pandemic uh, recovery continues, we have more than 200 more firm orders of aircraft coming and another 200 options to continue to uh, renew the fleet. And each generation of these aircraft that we bring on board saves 10 to 15 percent in fuel. With an eye on the next generation of low emission aircraft, American has also invested in vertical aerospace, a leading UK headquartered engineering and uh, aeronautical business that's developing electric uh, vertical takeoff uh, and landing aircraft. And, that, and, and we, what we find with this one is what's good for the planet is also good for our business. And that's something that the state of Oklahoma knows well, especially given their recent tri-party partnership for the development, production, and use of clean hydrogen. When I mention Oklahoma as an integral part of American in the past, it is also our future. And these types of initiatives are a key reason why. We're grateful the, for the collaborative partnerships and support from the state of Oklahoma. I'd also like to thank a lot of our suppliers and really partners that are participating today to include Spiro Aerosystems, Nordam, Pratt & Whitney, Boeing, AAR Corporation, BizJet International, and Lufthansa Technique. Each of you have been a crit critical to our success, especially as we turn the corner in coming out of the pandemic and all the challenges associated with it. Now, before I close, I would be remiss if I didn't acknowledge the, and thank the service members that are here today, including those here at Tinker Air Force Base. American has long championed our nation's military heroes, and as a veteran myself, I'm proud to work on a team that's doing all it can to honor and support our active military and our veterans. In fact, just last week, we unveiled a flagship Valor, an aircraft designed as a flying tribute to all the recipients of the Congressional Medal of Honor, the highest award for military valor in action. And the work preparing that aircraft was done here in the state of Oklahoma in our, with our incredible team in Tulsa, Oklahoma. So to all the active and uh, veteran service members here today, thank you very much for your service. And again, thank you for the opportunity to be here today. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Brent Kissling. I'm the executive director for the Oklahoma Department of Commerce. Mr. Seymour, thank you so much for those comments. Did you hear that he said that they've invested over $300 million recently and have just signed a new contract till 2048. Let's give them a huge round of applause and thank you. It's, it's my job to introduce our next speaker. 
And, uh, and I will tell you right now, you are living in the era of the airplane in Oklahoma. Well, you live in that era because our senior senator is a pilot. You live in that era because our governor is a pilot. You live in that era because we're getting new uh, missions that are coming to Tinker Air Force Base and to Vance and to Altus Air Force Base. You're living in that era because of companies like American Airlines that are making investments here. And everybody in this room that's involved in the supply chain, that's why you live in the era of the airplane right now in Oklahoma. And that's why, like the speaker mentioned earlier, it's now our second largest employer here within the state. Our goal at the Oklahoma Department of Commerce is to make sure that we are working uh, every day in line with the Aeronautics Commission. Grayson Artes does a, grand, uh, a great job there. Uh, I believe we have aligned our agencies closer than we ever have in state history. But today we're talking about advocacy. And I will tell you, our next speaker is a great advocate for being the most business-friendly state in the nation, for reducing regulation, for aligning our uh, educational systems to what our needs are in industry. He is an advocate for Oklahoma, he is an advocate for business, and he is a huge advocate for the aerospace and aviation industry. Ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together and welcome the governor of the great state of Oklahoma, Kevin Stitt. Wow, man. Man, it's awesome to be here with all my fellow Oklahomans and people from all over the state and probably all over the country as well. Uh, it's an honor to welcome you to the great state of uh, Oklahoma and our beautiful, beautiful capital. And, um, you know, my friends, I've got a lot of friends in the, in the legislature here, so thank you for your support. Senator Pugh, uh, thanks so much for being here. And it's an honor to have commanders here from a number of the units uh, on Tinker Air Force Base. Uh, including Major General King, uh, Commander of the Air Logistics Command, Logistics at uh, Tinker Air Force Base. Welcome. Thank you for being here today. Major General, I can't even count that high. I can't see how many stars you have on your shoulder there. <laughs> Well, uh, I, I'm also, I love aviation. I uh, love our military. I'm a pilot, I've been flying. I soloed it when I was 16. I have 3,000 hours. I think aviation is the coolest industry in our state. And luckily it's a, it's a huge part of our state's economy as well. Uh, but I gotta tell you kind of a funny story. Um, my, uh, my son just joined the military and so proud of him, he joined the army. My wife and I just got through with, uh, uh, with basic training, AIT. But my wife and I, when we went to his signing in, or swearing in ceremony, when you join the military, you promise to obey the President of the United States and defend the Constitution from all enemies, foreign and domestic. And then here's my 19-year-old son, because he's also joining the Oklahoma National Guard. With his hand in the air, he promises to obey the commands of the governor of the state of Oklahoma. So I've been wearing him out ever since. Go polish my boots, soldier. Go wash my truck. He's been rolling his eyes at his dad. So, uh, but it's a lot of fun. Uh, but truly, you know, aerospace and defense is a huge, huge part uh, of our economy in Oklahoma. Something we're very, very proud of. Uh, it has a $44 billion uh, economic impact to our state. Uh, about 1,100 companies uh, are in this space in our state, about 205,000 uh, employees. These are great paying jobs as well. For all the young people that are here, uh, I tell people all over the state, aerospace and defense are great paying jobs. The average is $73,000 per year, um, and it's centered primarily on maintenance, repair, uh, and overhaul, or MRO, on aircraft. And we're so, so blessed in the state of Oklahoma uh, that we have Tinker Air Force Base, the largest MRO facility in the entire country. I mean, it supports and sustains uh, all of the Air Force's fleet around the country. And so very, very blessed to have them right here uh, in our state. Uh, American Airlines, I met with their executives earlier, uh, the largest MRO on the commercial side is fortunately to be located also in the great state of Oklahoma, up in Tulsa. 
uh, with five or 6,000 employees there. Uh, Tinker's probably you know, close to 30,000 employees. So great, great you know, hubs in our, in our state. We also have five military bases, uh, seven National Guard bases, and we're one of just 12 FAA licensed spaceports in the entire United States, uh, the Oklahoma Aerospace and Industrial Complex. And ours is the only spaceport uh, with a launch corridor trajectory towards the North Pole. So huge advantage for us. We are pushing in commerce to continue to develop that and look for other ways to uh, bring in more uh, businesses around that. Uh, we also have the FAA complex, complex here. It's the largest in the, in the country, the Mike Maroney Aeronautical Center. Uh, and of course, the National Weather Center located uh, in my hometown uh, of Norman, which is really cool. Uh, we continue to expand and recruit new aerospace companies all the time to Oklahoma. In the last three years alone, I think we've added 30 companies, hundreds of millions in worth of investment, uh, 5,000 new jobs. Uh, so we're going to continue to build on that cluster and that workforce that we already have here uh, in our state. Uh, ACES is a specific program within commerce that we target and we can talk the lingo and we hire people outside of the military and this industry to focus on it. Uh, because when you're recruiting jobs, you want to talk to people that know what they're talking about. I think that's why Oklahomans elected a business person governor. So commerce is going crazy. And to brag on commerce for a second and the citizens of Oklahoma, we now have the lowest unemployment in our state's history right now. It's actually fifth in the country. We're top five in the country in unemployment. We have the largest savings account in our state's history. Uh, we're ranked fourth nationally when you look at our revenue state budget with the amount of savings that we have. Because of all that, we were able to give every Oklahoman and every business a tax cut last year. Because we need more taxpayers, we don't need more taxes, I want Oklahoma to be the most business friendly in the uh, state in the country. And that's going to be very, very attractive to companies. And people from California, all, all different parts of the country are waking up to the pro-business, pro-freedom policies in the state of Oklahoma. So tremendous blue skies ahead uh, for the great state of Oklahoma. Uh, touching on workforce, real quick. Uh, for all you young people in the room and for the parents that have uh, teenage children like I do uh, that are coming up, I met with the American Airlines executives today. Do you know what a starting salary is for an A&P mechanic at American Airlines? $75,000 a year. I'm going home to tell my 16-year-old that you're going to become an A&P mechanic, okay? Uh, that is fantastic. And then in seven years, that's 130,000. This is without a college degree. About half the people in Oklahoma go to college and that's fantastic. And we need more engineers and we need more teachers and we need more nurses, but we also need more A&P mechanics. And those are fantastic jobs and careers uh, for young people. God puts certain abilities and desires in all of our hearts. We're not all created exactly the same to do the exact jobs. And it's our job as leaders is to point young people and give them all those options with mentors and, and uh, internships and explain all the different great jobs that are out there uh, for our young people to go uh, tackle and, and achieve. So that's just uh, something that's very, very important to me. When I think about the education in Oklahoma, we have some fantastic universities uh, that are leaning in uh, hard to this space. From University of Tulsa's new school of cyber studies, uh, that is cyber technology is something, especially the Russian-Ukraine uh, conflict is also putting that on top of mind. I got a, a letter from President Biden uh, just a couple weeks ago encouraging all the governors to really look at our cybersecurity around the state. So we've been doing that with our electric grid and everything else. Uh, but cybersecurity is, a, is an industry that young people need to be leaning into. And we've got one of the best schools in that at the University of Tulsa. Uh, Oklahoma State's Aerospace Institute for Research and Education. Uh, we're seeing some claps in here. We got some kids that go there. Uh, OU's College of Aerospace and Mechanical Engineering in Norman is leading the way. Bragging on them for a second. Oklahoma is also uh, the first university in the nation with a PhD program focused on UAS design. Um, this program is at Oklahoma State University there in Stillwater. Uh, so we know that 
Uh, we have to take education and our universities and our career techs and our, and our common education system and align it with the industries that are here in Oklahoma. It's just common sense. We have to continue, and that's what I'm always pushing our universities, is to meet with industries and get that workforce ready uh, for those jobs of the future. Um, uh, so personally, super engaged in, in this industry and pushing the universities to keep training that. Uh, and, I'll, and I'll leave you with this. Uh, we live in the greatest country in the world. We have freedoms. And I want to thank, and I want to thank our, our military, the people in uniform in the back for your service. So much respect you for all of the generals that are here and all you do to sustain our Air Force fleet. Thank you guys so much for doing that. We have to protect our freedoms. We have freedom of speech and we have freedom of religion. And our founders, they uniquely understood that religious liberties were the keys to all other liberties. And we're living in such interesting times where some uh, leaders in states or cities, they think it's okay to sacrifice your freedoms for what they think is important. And that's why in Oklahoma, we will fight back and we will protect your freedoms and our way of life from any one person in Washington, D.C. saying that our companies and our people should work this, should do certain things. Because our Constitution protects the minority views. And when we, our founders, when they set up our Constitution, they uniquely understood the detriment to a central strong government that could force everybody to do certain things. And what wasn't specifically given to the federal government belongs to the states or the people. That's what our Constitution says. And we'll continue to stand up. Thank you. We'll continue to stand up and fight for Oklahoma's way of life. God bless you guys. Thank you all for being at the Capitol today. Thank you, Governor. Uh, life is easy in state government when your governor is a pilot and already knows more than what I could even imagine for aviation aerospace. Truly amazing opportunities. So you heard me talk about Senator Racino earlier. We have his uh, cohort, twin maybe, uh, in the Senate, uh, although he, he will probably yell at me for that because of the, uh, the challenge there with the different services that they, uh, that they serve. But wanted to close out today with Senator Adam Pugh giving us some words of wisdom to, to go forward, to advocate, and continue our message of making aviation aerospace what we hope to be our number one industry at some point in time in the future. Senator? Well, good morning, and thank you all for being here. You Really, you thought you were here for Aero Day. But I'm actually here to welcome you to the 30th day of the annual Air Force tradition we like to call Mustache March. So, and Navy, welcome to an Air Force Day. Thanks for being here. I'm just kidding. It is uh, my honor uh, to close us out. And last night I heard a great line. It said, a great speech is where the beginning is as close to the end as possible. So I'm going to try to make that happen for you. As Senator Rosino, uh, my colleague and my friend, said earlier today, we are all in on aerospace. We are all in. We want to make this industry the number one industry in the state of Oklahoma. What an amazing industry it is. Whether you're interested in launching things into outer space, flying commercial passengers around the world, putting steel on target, and supporting the national defense mission of the United States, coding, software programming, or building drones that can fly a pizza from Dallas to Oklahoma City in less than an hour when it arrives at your door and it's still hot. That's the aerospace and avi aviation industry we are trying to build for you here in Oklahoma. To the men and women who are here today wearing the uniform, thank you so much for your service and your sacrifice on our behalf. We get to do things like this because of people like you who go out in places in the world we can't pronounce and we've never been to and do things for us. So thank you very much for being here. To young people, 
I want you to stay in Oklahoma when you graduate. Now, if you like beaches or you like mountains, I can't help you. But if you want a great job in an amazing industry, I want Oklahoma to be the first best option for you when you're looking around at what you want to do when you grow up. So this is your house. We haven't done this event in three years. So welcome to the Capitol if it's your first time. Welcome back. If it's been a while since you've been here, I hope you enjoy all the awesome activities that we have planned for you today. I hope you enjoy being here. I hope you connect with businesses, with legislative leaders, with government agencies. Tell, tell them your stories. Tell them what you need. Tell them what our industry needs. And tell them our successes. Thank you so much. Welcome to Aero Day 2022. Thank you so much for being here to the Aeronautics Commission, to the Department of Commerce, and everybody who made this possible. Thank you so much. God bless and enjoy the rest of your day. I would encourage each one of you to go back to the second floor, walk around, see some of our exhibitors and our companies. The governor will be down there walking around. So please join us in continuing this amazing day for advocacy for aviation aerospace. I appreciate each one of you being here. I look forward to seeing you next year.